Aloha! Wouldn't it be nice to have a little spreadsheet that you could enter transactions and automatically see their impact on the expanded accounting equation, on a full set of financial statements, as well as on a core set of financial ratios? Well, that's what this is. I created this for my Accounting 201 students at BYU Hawaii. Uh, before you go any further, you might want to download this Excel workbook, which is located right here. Uh, download this and you can kind of follow along. But my main goal is I want to teach students how to indicate the accounts being affected by a transaction, note whether they increased or decreased, indicate the amount that it in increased or decreased, and they will automatically see whether it's a debit or a credit, and they will automatically also see the impact on all the financial statements as well as the ratios. So here, let's go ahead and do uh, what my students tend to find to be the most difficult journal entry because there's four different accounts involved. This, this is the sale on account of inventory to a customer. So in this case, let's assume that you have $300 of inventory. So you can go down to your balance sheet down here and imagine that you have some inventory here in this year, uh, $300 worth, and you're going to give it to a customer. And that customer is not going to pay you right away, but rather he's going to give you a promise to pay you, which we call a receivable. Okay? And now they're going to promise to pay us more than the $300, obviously, because otherwise we wouldn't make any money. We need to have a little margin between the um, revenue we're going to earn and the cost of the goods that we sold. Okay, so we're going to say we sell it for a thousand bucks. So let's go up here. Let's think of the accounts affected. Well, first of all, we know we're going to get an accounts receivable from this customer because they're going to promise to pay us. And you can see I have a little drop down list in alphabetical order. You can just click on it that way. Now, we just got this receivable. Now, how did we finance that receivable? We financed it by making a sale to a customer. That's a type of equity account. And we call it sales revenue. Okay. Now the next thing we did, we actually had to give up something uh, to the customer. We gave up inventory. And when we give up inventory in exchange to a customer on a sale, we have to record a related expense called cost of goods sold. Okay, so in other words, we give up inventory and we record the expense. We give up inventory and record the expense and we receive a receivable because we made a sale. Okay, so now let's, let's look at the pieces here. Okay, our accounts receivable, we have more accounts receivable, so we're going to say it increased. We have more revenue because it increased. And we have less inventory, so we're going to say that decreased. And we have less inventory because we have the cost of goods sold expense increasing. So we're giving away inventory and we have to record a related expense. Okay, now let's move on. How much more receivable do we have? Well, we have a thousand dollars more receivable. Now, what I want you to watch is I want you to watch what happens on the ratios and I want you to, want you to watch what happens on the expanded accounting equation. This is effectively a summary of the balance sheet. So if I say it increased by $1,000, you'll see that this ending balance will go up by 1000 And I've already shown that that is a debit. If you want to know your debits and credits, you can just go over and look at this list over here. Accounts receivable is increased on the debit, in other words, the left-hand side. I hope that you've learned about debits and credits already, that this, this video won't do it for you. Um, so sales revenue then increased $1,000, and as you can see, we already had the increase in assets due to the receivable, so we're currently out of balance, but now as we, re -re as we record the revenue, we're going to see a thousand dollars of revenue go up here, which causes net income to go up, which causes your retained earnings to go up, and since retained earnings is part of equity, it'll see, you'll see equity go up. So all those will go up by a thousand. And as you can see, that's a credit. Okay, and everything's back in balance. Now, when we give up inventory, we're going to give up three hundred dollars of inventory. That'll cause our assets to go down by 300 down to uh, 1508 uh, 450 I'm going to hit enter as you can see when inventory goes down it's a credit to inventory and we're currently out of balance it as you can see it says try again debits must equal credits you see my debits are a thousand my credits are 1300 so I'll go ahead and enter the 300 
increase in expense. If I increase expenses by 300, that'll cause net income to go down, retained earnings to go down, equity to go down. There you go. And we're back in balance. And hopefully you've noticed all these ratios changing. And you know, in your class, you'll learn what these different ratios mean and whether it's a positive trend or a negative trend, um, depending on which direction these ratios go from one year to the next. So I hope that was helpful to you. Um, I really think this can be a great tool for just kind of getting a feel for uh, the impact on the financial statements of given transactions. And to be honest, a lot of students take accounting never expecting to be an accountant. And so I think this spreadsheet focusing on these increases and decreases and their impact and related financial ratio impact um, is pretty much what they want you to get out of your introductory accounting class. So I hope that helps and aloha.